remember what God's plan is for your life, and I'm going to go into that a little bit. And I know a lot of people are in struggle mode right now, but uh, the good news is, is that uh, you didn't catch God by surprise. He knew the choices many of us would make, and he's going to give you an opportunity to make a choice to come out of that. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says this. Therefore, the promise comes by faith. How does the promise come? By faith. So that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. This is Paul writing. And he says, as it is written... I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God and in whom he uh, believed. Uh, who did Abraham believe? God. God. And the God who gives life to the dead and calls things into beings that were not. Uh, verse 18 says, my focus is going to come these next three verses. Uh, against all hope, say against all hope. Yes. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. And so became the father of many nations. Just as it has been said to him, so shall your offspring be. The same thing God said to Abraham, because if anybody has any questions, that, well, that was for Abraham in the Old Testament. Paul already took care of it to let all of us know. So it was said to Abraham, so it shall be with his offspring, verse 19, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. He's talking to some people in here that didn't think God could use you uh, or, or to give birth to something, hallelujah, or conceive something to give birth to. Yet, he did not waver. Look at your neighbor and say, he didn't waver. He didn't waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being, watch this, here it is, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what God had promised. I, I'm going to go back and say that again. He was fully persuaded. Can you tell somebody next to you, I need to be fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. He was fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him. As righteousness. Amen. Father, I thank you today. And again, I say let your word fall on good soil. Uh, soil that's not caught up in the, uh, the storms of life. Uh, but a, a heart that's ready to be empowered and encouraged to do the will of God and receive the promise that God has given us all. We love you, Lord. I thank you. Let me articulate this in the way that the Holy Spirit would want. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. Slap your neighbor a high five and say, are you fully persuaded? Are you fully persuaded? And you may be seated. Amen. Paul's talking about the faith of Abraham, and he had faith built by having to trust God in many situations. And uh, I, I'd like to tell somebody here that whether it's your first time here or you've been here a week or a month or a few months or a couple of years, that your life, all the things you're going through, uh, the choices you make that puts you in storms, and just sometimes God leading us to a place where God wants us to learn how to depend upon Him, your faith is being built by the circumstances in your life. In other words, the circumstances were never uh, meant by God to build you into a wreck. Somebody who can't control or harness their emotions. But they were used for you and I to be able to uh, be discipled by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. So when I face certain situations, I know how to make the right choice. And if I get in the habit of making the right choice, look at your neighbors, I got to get in the habit of the making habit. the right choice. Making the right because choice. when I do that, then God is able to allow storms to come in my life that will allow me to make the right choice. And if I do it enough, it becomes what? Who I am. So he said that Abraham went through a lot of situations, and so are his offsprings. Many situations where you're going to have to make up your mind if you're going to make a choice that honors and glorifies God so that you and I can be counted in heaven as being righteous. Can somebody say amen? amen. And, and maybe we're not there yet. And I, I'm here to tell you right now that you may not be there yet, but God has this thing that he don't do things. 
change the way people want to do things. See, people want everybody to be perfect, even though the people that expect that are not perfect. I, I want to let you know today that I haven't found anybody in the Bible that wasn't messed up before they were blessed up. Can you say that? So I want to encourage you today that many of us, we just need to get into the habit of making the right choice. God has called you. God wants to use your life. Because let me tell you something. God says in the Bible that he knew you before you were in your mother's womb. Now understand, when I looked up the word knew, that word was a word of conception. In other words, conception means that the only way we can have children is if you have one person, a male, another woman, a female. Hello, I'm sorry to break the news to the uh, lesbian and gay community, but yes, you, you don't have a way to reproduce, so that should tell you whether it's right or wrong, but I'm not going to go there because I don't want them to say I'm a hate crime because I'm not a hate crime. I just preach the Bible. You make your own choice. It's like when I was a drug addict, I had a choice. I could live the way God wanted me to live or I could keep getting high till I die and when I die, I got to face a God that said that I didn't live the lifestyle that he left for me. But I'm going to go somewhere else and not go there. The thing is, is that God has a way for you and I to live and he said, make the choice. Make the choice that's right and you'll be righteous in my eyes. And there's not one person in here that don't have something inside of them that does not honor God, including me. Can somebody say amen? amen. You know, I like the fact that he took Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, and even though Abraham wasn't perfect, and he began to build his life in circumstances, and Isaac did some of the same things that his father Abraham did, and, and now we got Jacob, and Jacob was a son. They said Jacob was, was all messed up, and, and, and Jacob, even when God came to wrestle with Jacob, Jacob. He said he came and he said, what's your name? And Jacob was like, wrestling with God. Why are you wrestling if you, if, if, if you say who you say you are? He's wrestling with God. And God said, the only reason we're wrestling is because I said, what's your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. And Jacob meant supplanter. It meant liar. It meant trickster. It meant manipulator. And God said, no, man. You're looking at how messed up you are. I'm trying to use your life. I don't look at you as Jacob. I look at you as Israel. You're a prince. You're going to win a nation of people to me. So he was wrestling with God find out exactly who he was. And some of you are wrestling with God, even in this place right now. You're not fully persuaded who you are in Christ, and you're wrestling with God. Uh, it gets quiet because you know you're wrestling. Amen? It's good. But don't wrestle too long. Because eventually you'll run out of life. See, why does the writer want us to observe the faith of Abraham. Well, because Paul knew as time went forth that the way life is for anybody, whether it be now, if you and I are dead and gone, 300 years from now, if the Lord don't come back, people in life, because of the way God set things up to bring everything to a close eventually, would live in a time of uncertainty. Uh, I know I'm talking to a few of y'all right now. A time of uncertainty. You know, I look at some of y'all now, you know, uh, uh, um, you might be in a time of uncertainty right now. Amen? Really, I'm looking at some of y'all. Like, some of y'all, uh, I'm not certain if you're listening. Amen? I'm in a time of uncertainty. That's why I walk around like this. People are like, why is he coming back over here again? I don't know, the Lord just led me to your side, I guess. Anybody ever been in a time of uncertainty? So if God knows that, if he knows you're in a time of uncertainty, then the problem is going to be this, man. What you going to lean on when times get rough? Do you lean on your own understanding? Because that's what the majority of the world does. They lean on their own understanding. They say, uh, uh, do what's right in my eyes. I don't see what's wrong with it. And the problem is how we see the problem. Can you say amen? See, all of us are going to face a lot of uncertain times. In this day and age, we got people losing jobs, and now they don't feel the security they once felt. People losing homes, and they don't feel the security they once felt. Marriages are breaking like crazy. Promises are being made of marriage, and then they're getting severed because uh, 
we're supposed to only have one relationship, but for some reason in our day and age, we got we just can't get away from the multiple relationship thing and uh, times of uncertainty. People's health, one minute we're good, the next day we get a physical and we get the report from the doctor that, you know, you got cancer or diabetes or, or you know, all these different things, man. And, and we're in the time of uncertainty. And, uh, and during these times, I, I'm not going to be able to be all God called me to be or do all God called me to do if I am not fully persuaded. Abraham went through what he went through, having to possibly sacrifice his son as a demonstration of his love for God and his obedience for God, 